was gearing up for the Clinton Global Initiative, which starts Monday. This used to be an annual conference, but hasn't been held since 2016. The 76-year-old Clinton is energized that it's been reborn. And he's energized, as always, by American politics. President Clinton, pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. When you look at the midterms, do you think because of abortion and because of the, the passage of a, a, a few very important bills, could Biden break the historical pattern of the, you know, midterms going badly? Absolutely. But we could hold both these houses. Uh, but we have to say the right things. And we have to note the Republicans always close well. Why? Because they find some new way to scare the living daylights out of swing voters about something. That's what they did in 2021, where they made critical race theory sound worse than smallpox. And it wasn't being taught in any public schools in America. But they didn't care. They just scare people. And at the end, the break point in American politics is much, not much different than it was in the 90s. That is, you still have to get those people. It's just that there's so many fewer. Because as the parties have gone more ideological and clear and somehow psychically intolerant, they pull fewer, the more and more of people toward the extremes. But there's still some people hanging on there who are really trying to think and trying to understand what's going on. So I think that's very important. And the way Tony Blair puts it is he says that, I think I'm paraphrasing correctly, that you and he understood that you had to appeal to people on cultural issues to reassure them that you weren't a, a, a crazy-eyed radical. And then they would be open to listening to your yeah. economic policies, which were going to help them. But if they thought you were somehow alien, they were just not going to be listening. That's right. For example, and it applies to other things. I mean, when I, when we succeeded in breaking the filibuster and getting the assault weapons ban passed, I said, look, I grew up in a hunting culture. You know, I had a, a 22 when I was 10 years old, a 410 shotgun, a tiny one when I was 14. I don't want to do anything to interfere with your right to hunt, sports shoot, or uh, protect yourself, especially if you live in a rural area where the police response time might be pretty extended. But if, if I keep that commitment, wouldn't you like to help a lot of these kids that are being shot down in drive-by shootings live? Wouldn't you like to do that? We need your help here. And that's what I did. I didn't call them killers. I didn't, you know, talk about the NRA. I talked about people. There aren't so many of them, but you just need a few to flip from one side to the other, and you've got a healthy governing majority. It is hard, and it's much harder now than when I did it, and it was hard then. So, but what Biden reasoned was, I just have to keep at it, and I'll either get something done or I won't, but I can't win a word war with these guys. I've got to win based on things that will help people. And now you see he's getting a little more robust in his rhetoric, but it's because he's got a platform to stand on that will help other people's lives. Politics is about other people. And uh, the problem with the culture war is that it always tries to turn it back to the politicians. What's wrong with them? And this is what the press has to guard against, because if you have to worry about daily ratings, you know, the drama of two people duking it out is far more profoundly effective. But it always, in the end, winds up helping the right, because we, it's harder to build a barn than it is to kick one down. And then when you build it, you got to explain what you built and why it's a good thing to put your animals in your barn. And it's just, it's harder, but it's really worth doing. I'm struck by how, when you watch the Republicans campaigning for this midterm, it's almost all about cancel culture, about critical race theory. It's yeah. about what your kids are going to be taught in school. Ron DeSantis' email, fundraising emails are all about that. Will it work? No, but look, he's sending Venezuelans who were coming here freeing the successor to Hugo Chavez, this 
disaster uh, because the guy doesn't want to go and he has no economic answers, right? So he sends them to Martha's Vineyard. Why? Because Martha's Vineyard is this symbol of where the elite goes to vacation. And for people who know more on the East Coast, it was also the first place that welcomed black professionals and business people from the South to come and live on equal terms in a, in a community that was largely created for religious reflection and study. So it's, you know, that's what's going on. And I don't know what Massachusetts is going to do, but I'll bet that they will make those people feel at home.